Idiotic laws from around the world are a tale as old as time. It's such an anciently humorous did you know factoid that they'd regularly make their rounds in those email chains that you'd get from your grandma. Uh, uh, I, I'm showing my age again. I mean, they're often sent to you as copy and pasted Facebook posts by your mom in a text message. <sighs> okay, that was that was close. I almost made a really big blunder there. My grandma died long before she had an email address, but anyway. How many of you out there actually go above and beyond in the service of silly shit like I do and research these things? We've heard of these laws time and time again. For example, the one I always heard growing up was that it's illegal to parachute in Florida on a Sunday as an unmarried woman. But obviously that's not true, right? When have you ever, and I mean ever, heard of that law coming into action or being enforced or even being mentioned outside of people emailing you things like, hey, did you know that it's illegal to parachute in Florida on a Sunday as an unmarried woman? I, I meant not email sent as a Facebook message. Fuck! I found this infographic here from Olivet Nazarene University and watch, I'm gonna snap my fingers and disappear so you can kind of look at it. It provides a bright and colorful collection of a dumb law from all 50 states. Now I want to go through these laws and try my best to see if they fit into one of three categories. One, the law is an actual law. Two, the law is technically a law via logical leap, which I'll explain later. Or three, the law is just an urban legend, a misinterpretation, it doesn't exist anymore, it was repealed, it was a local law that was misinterpreted as a state law, yada yada yada. Category three just means means in one way or another, it's not illegal. For the purposes of clarity, if a law applies to only part of a state, such as a city or a county, we're going to go ahead and put it in category three, because that does not make it a state law. If I say eating a mayonnaise sandwich is illegal in Los Angeles, then that doesn't mean it's illegal in all of California. And all of these laws dictate them as if they are state laws, which you will soon see is mostly untrue. Now, it's possible for a handful of these, they were laws at one point, and throughout the years, historical state codes listing them have not been preserved or updated, or they're no longer utilized, and I'm going to try my best to point out these cases. But for the most part, that still does not mean it's a law, and I'll clarify that later on as well. And who knows, maybe throughout this video we'll have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> oh, and to uh, answer your question, I'm not covering countries outside of America's laws because I'm American. I'm a fucking American! How many times do I have to tell you that? Alabama. It is illegal to surf the internet without using Atlas VPN to protect your online browsing. Wait, that's... that's not a law. Well, it should be, because this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN, the VPN that since 2019 has already racked up more than 6 million users worldwide thanks to its incredible ability to escape any would-be hacker's jurisdiction. We're talking about accessing region lock streaming content, getting deals while shopping online, blocking ads, countering malicious links, keeping your data private, and protecting unlimited devices all in one app. Boy, if this VPN was a person, I'd definitely arrest it. Because it's breaking the law of providing too good of a deal. You should laugh now, that was hilarious. What isn't hilarious, though, is how incredibly affordable Atlas VPN is. Atlas VPN is being offered right now for just $1.83 per month, with three months extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Those are savings that are both not a joke and just what the judge ordered by court mandate. If you're about to go to Cambodian prison for all of those terrible animal rights crimes you just violated, with Atlas VPN you'll at least be able to watch The Shawshank Redemption on Netflix by claiming you're Canadian. Hint, hint, hint. Grab the big deal because Atlas VPN Premium is just $183 a month with three months extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your privacy, get the perks of a VPN, and overrule any lofty charges of browsing the internet like a weenie by clicking the link in the description below. Be quick, this is a limited time offer. Did you click yet? What the hell is wrong with you? I said to be quick! Hurry up and click it! Click the link in the description and get started with Atlas VPN right now. Alabama. It is illegal to wear a fake mustache that causes laughter in church. We're off to a stellar start because from what I can tell from top to bottom, this is absolute bullshit. We're going to establish a term here that you've probably heard from the time you tried to convince your friend that that hot girl over there is totally into you and not hoping that you'll shut the fuck up about your Warhammer 40k collection. It's called a leap of logic. A leap of logic or a logical leap is when you get way too out there with your originally evidence-based conclusions. 
reasons. For example, if I were to say that anyone who drives a lifted truck is a massive douche, I would objectively be correct. But if I said anyone who drives a lifted truck is a massive douche, and therefore has a pathetically fragile ego, I would also be objectively correct. But if I said that anyone who drives a lifted truck is a massive douche, and therefore if you or anyone else ever sets foot inside of a lifted truck, you'll become a psychopathic killing machine, that's taking the assertion too far. Someone wanting to own a lifted truck is a symptom of them being an obnoxious piss ass, not something that turns you into one. Okay, another simpler, less funny way to think about it is imagine you visit a foreign country and you see a town full of people wearing red hats and you start to think, wow, everyone here wears red hats all the time. That must mean that everyone in this town is always wearing red hats all the time. Now that could be true, but the evidence doesn't support that large of a conclusion. It could be a holiday, it could be a parade, it could be a coincidence, etc, etc. When you take evidence of a conclusion and broaden or narrow the scope too much, that's a logical leap. In Alabama, there was a law in the criminal code dictating guidelines on things you could and could not do in respect to keeping public peace. Already, we can say this law fits into the category of was a law at some point but isn't anymore because the law in question was repealed back in 2015. But that law in question has nothing to do with fake mustaches or real mustaches or churches. It has to do with Sunday. No, not the ice cream, you dense motherfucker. Sunday the day. Section 31A-12-1 of the Alabama Code of Law. Certain acts prohibited on Sunday. Now it's a long one, but to summarize, it's a pretty old timey law that flat out tells you what you can and can't do on a Sunday in Alabama. For example, you can't compel a child, apprentice, or servant to perform any labor. And if you decide to go shooting, hunting, racing, card playing, or keep your store open on a Sunday, you bet your ass is gonna get smashed with a 10 to $100 fine and up to three months in jail. Now there are exceptions. Public transportation, cops, doctors, etc., are all allowed to work on a Sunday. And if you own a shop that sells food, you're more than welcome to keep it open on a Sunday. But do you see the problem? The law does not ban wearing a fake mustache in church and making people laugh. It bans being a disruptive piece of shit on Sunday. Church service is, as far as I remember, historically held on Sunday mornings, and wearing a fake mustache is pretty much never gonna happen outside of a humorous context. So I think you can all start to see the leap of logic in action here. The law says that you cannot be a dickhead to other people on Sunday, and you also have to close up shop so people can have the day off. Well, wait a minute. Does that mean I can't be an asshole in church? Yeah, don't, don't do that. So if I were to say, wear a fake mustache and try to make people laugh on Sunday morning church service, that's illegal? Well, yeah, I suppose. Wow, what a crazy law. Do you see how this kind of shit happens? That's just a specific twisting of facts to try to create a sensible storyline out of the interpretation of an out of date law. Although only officially repealed in 2015, I'll bet your ass and a half this shit probably hasn't ever been enforced in the last 100 years or so. It was never illegal to put on a plastic womb broom and make people giggle for Jesus. It was illegal to be a little shithead on Sunday. Alaska. It is illegal to wake a sleeping bear to take a photo. Okay, I should just call this one Logical Leaps the video because this one isn't exactly true either. But for this one, I could see people being charged with it depending on context. Alaska Statute 1605920 says, unless you have special permission, a person may not take, transport, sell, offer to sell, purchase, or offer to purchase fish, game, or marine aquatic plants, or any part of fish, game, or aquatic plants or a nest or egg of fish a game don't steal the Alaskan animals from Alaska. That's pretty straightforward, right? Wrong! When we head to the definitions section of this law, the word take in that sentence doesn't just mean take. It means like like 30 fucking things. 
according to their definition. According to section 940 of that same statute, take means taking, pursuing, hunting, fishing, trapping, or in any manner disturbing. Stop right there. In any manner disturbing. See, this is why being a lawyer is a whole fucking career and not something you or me or 99% of the dumbasses on this planet will ever be good at. The law doesn't just mean don't steal Alaska's animals. It means don't fuck with Alaska's animals. And guess what? Waking that bear up just for a photo? I could easily count that as disturbing it in my books if I were a judge. So while this law specifically is not a law, it has a lot more merit and truth to it than the dumb fucking mustache bullshit we just covered. If you remove the whole photo part and have it just say it's illegal to disturb the wildlife, and that includes waking up the bears, I'd say that this dumb law is pretty true, even though it's a little overly specific in how it's shared on the internet. Good job, Alaska. Now I guess I'll have to wake up some other kind of fucking bear. What do we got? Oh, hey, a polar bear. <laughs> Arizona. It is illegal for donkeys to sleep in bathtubs. By the way, that scream was just to intimidate the polar bear. I kicked its ass, obviously. Now, illegal for donkeys to sleep in bathtubs. This is not a law. Plain and simple, it's based off a story that may or may not have been an urban legend. I found plenty of websites mentioning the law and telling the story of how it came to be, but not a single source that mentioned a specific law, nor any applicable incidents in question that could create a court case or generate a law, nothing. The closest law I found is some statutes making equine tripping illegal, but nothing about what donkeys can and can't do with their own goddamn bathtub. So the story Story goes, in 1924, there was a rancher in Kingman, Arizona. And here's the plot twist. Are you ready? He had a donkey. I'm sorry if I spoiled that for you. The donkey loved to do what any wine drunk mom loves to do any given day. It fell asleep in a bathtub. One day, a dam nearby broke and flooded the town, whisking the donkey and the bathtub down the river. After the considerable resource and labor expenditure it took to get them back, the town decided to pass a law banning the idea of donkeys sleeping in bathtubs altogether. This sounds like horse shit, all right? Uh, donkey shit? Would this technically be mule shit? Okay, but really, like, think about this one for a minute. Because this shit did not fucking happen. You're telling me a bathtub, an old-timey bathtub, supported a full-grown donkey's weight in water deep enough to float, but shallow enough to not sink. And the donkey at no point got out or fell out or one of the 10,000 other things that would happen if you put a fucking donkey in a bathtub and not in a fairy tale. Oh, donkeys can swim, by the way, for long distances, too. You can look that up. There is no fucking way this animal would stay in the tub longer than five seconds if it began to float away. Oh, and there are bathtub boat races. It's a real sport, but the bathtubs are heavily modified and counterweighted to not immediately sink or tip over as soon as they enter the water. Do you really think a full ass grown ass in a regular ass bathtub is going to sail smoothly? Please. Oh, and by the way, again, if you really want to hold on to hope of this one being real, there's other stories that claim that this law exists in Georgia and Oklahoma, not Arizona. I have no idea where this one came from, but it's top to bottom horse plus donkey super mule combo bullshit. Don't believe it. Arkansas. It is illegal to mispronounce Arkansas. Oh fuck, I'm going to jail. No, I mean it, I'm going to jail because I'm proud to announce this is a law. Statute 1-4-105 of the Arkansas Code, pronunciation of the state name. Now it's a few paragraphs, but it literally just says, hey guys, let's make sure that everyone says Arkansas right or else this whole lawmaking shit is gonna get real confusing because people are just gonna think we're Kansas. And then it goes on and on and on to explain in elaborate detail how to properly pronounce Arkansas. Now don't worry, I was kidding about going to jail. This law only applies to oral officials proceedings and it seems more of a formality than anything with consequence slapped on it. But I'm extremely proud to say it only took us four states to find an actual bona fide by the book law. Good job, Arkansas. Ah, oh, fuck. California. A frog that dies in a frog jumping contest cannot legally be eaten. I can't fucking believe it. This one is a real law too. 
We're two for two, and this is the law that keeps the streak going. Believe it or not, folks, you legally cannot eat a frog that dies in a frog jumping contest in the state of California. Fish and Game Code of California Division 6, which is for fish, part one, which is for general regulations, chapter seven, which is the section on amphibia, and finally, article two, which is six whole paragraphs specifically about frog jumping contests. Let's jump into section 6883, and I'm gonna read this one verbatim because it's a fucking grand slam. Any person may possess any number of live frogs to use in frog jumping contests, but if such a frog dies or is killed, it must be destroyed as soon as possible and may not be eaten or otherwise used for any purpose. Don't you dare eat those frog legs, don't you do it. If that thing croaked, <laughs> <laughs> During a frog jumping contest, it must be destroyed immediately. If you eat it, your ass is going to jail. Now, I can't find a specific reason why this law was created, but I'm going to assume it was a holdover from the Great Depression and pioneer times as a matter of public sanitation. To me, the law feels super ambiguous for how specific it is. If I have a frog and I want to enter a frog jumping contest, but it dies a month before the event, do I still go to the clink? It's like having a law that says it's illegal to have sex with a virgin. If I have sex with a virgin, they're not a virgin anymore, so technically... I'm guilty of a crime depending on when you catch me in the middle of it. Oh, but, but don't worry guys, they won't ever enact that law so you still have a chance to get laid. Colorado. It is illegal to ride a horse while under the influence. It's true, It's but it's boring. It's boring and it's believable and it's boring. In fact, a guy in Boulder was charged with violating it in 2013. Now, in my opinion, this law is pretty reasonable, especially if you consider horses as the cars of their era and preventing their operation while intoxicated makes a lot of sense. Have you seen some of the horses out there? Imagine giving that sort of power to a guy hammered off his ass. It's a bad idea. Now, if it said something like you can't ride a drunken horse, that raise a lot more questions, but I don't think anyone watching would gasp and drop their monocle if this was on the books. So instead, we're gonna do something a little different and way more interesting for this one. I happen to have a friend. That's unbelievable, I know. But he's a lawyer in Colorado. Now, isn't that something? I gave him a ring and asked if he could tell you guys about a particularly wacky law in Colorado that he's come across. And he said, yeah, fuck it, why not? Take it away, real life friend and totally not an actor I paid to help me with this video. I'm gonna start by assuming that you have property. This doesn't have to be a lavish mansion in the hills. I'm simply talking about financial interests, things that you value, things that you might want to go down to your children or your loved ones later on down the line. Now there are multiple different documents and legal ways of doing this, but the important thing to keep in mind is that many of these documents have certain requirements in order to be considered valid. In Colorado, for a lot of these documents to be valid and perform their function, you can't have been at a previous marriage still going on when you enter into these agreements. Now, what does that look like? So imagine here, you were at your deathbed, surrounded by your loved ones, secure in the knowledge that your wonderful, fantastic attorney has made sure that all of your financial documents will flow down the line to those that are supporting you now. But you remember one night in April, a beautiful night when you were having a wonderful time with a beautiful individual and you remember, well, yeah, they stayed over a couple of times. Well, in Colorado, there's something called a common law marriage. It's a type of marriage that occurs when three requirements are met. The first two requirements are easily enough proven. They are the idea that you want to get married, intent to be married, and the idea that there's proof of this intent to be married. So that wonderful vixen you spent the night with could say, well, you know, all of his friends and family heard us say, we want to get married, or he gave me a ring. This proves that we want to be married. That's all well and good and fairly easily provable. The silly thing about Colorado is that the third requirement is cohabitation, living together. Now, what constitutes cohabitation? In Colorado, it's just one night of staying over at somebody's house. This is where it gets a little bit silly. So come back with me to that day on your deathbed and suddenly in through the door burst that beautiful tryst you had so many nights ago. And they say, well, actually, remember that one night in April when I stayed over? That constitutes a common law marriage. We were actually technically married in the eyes of the law. So all of those documents you prepared, 
all of that line of financial security you're hoping to pass down to your children, well, it's all null and void. It doesn't work. It's been severed because we were actually married. Wow, that was so interesting. By the way, I have no idea what he just talked about. I'm recording this before he sent me the footage, and I'm only finding out what he talked about in editing. I am openly lying to your face about my enthusiasm. What are you gonna do? Sue me? You can't. I have a lawyer. Connecticut, a pickle cannot legally be considered a pickle unless it bounces. There's a ton of bullshit surrounding this one. Swats and swats of websites online. Get this one tits up, because I gotta tell ya, it's not a law. While there is a story behind it, the law that revolves around it is good old fashioned fraud. There's nothing about pickles in the legal text whatsoever. While you may do some Googling and find tales of 1800s cucumber smugglers behind all this, it's not a true story. And a lot of people are gonna reference Connecticut's Uniform Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act as the law that kinda made this whole thing happen, but that law never once specifically mentions pickles or bouncing. So here's what really happened. In 1948, two dickheads named Sidney Sparrer and Moses Drexler sold some bad pickles Pickles, rank pickles, swamp ass pickles. The Food and Drug Commissioner at the time, Frederick Holcomb, discussed different ways to tell if a pickle was up to snuff. There's way too many your mother and gay porno jokes possible on that last sentence, even for me, so we're gonna move on. Holcomb said one of the ways to test for good pickles without needing to eat them was to bounce them off the floor. A good pickle would bounce. That is the stupidest shit I've ever heard, and it explains nothing about anything but the old-timey slogan stuck, and you can see it on merchandise around Connecticut today. Now, it turns out the boys' pickles did the opposite of a pinball machine and didn't bounce. Sparrer and Drexler were eventually arrested for their penis substitute shenanigans, and their entire stock of dubious deals was destroyed. That law I mentioned earlier about uniform food in Connecticut, that's what they were charged with violating. That law's got nothing to do with pickles specifically, and this story has nothing to do with them creating a law about making pickles required to bounce. These days I'd be extremely fucking sure if something like this happened again because they just test the pickles using science or something like, you know, not stupid shit. They'd call Mythbusters. But either way, don't even take my word for it. Here's a soundbite I stole from NBC Connecticut. Does Connecticut really have a bouncing pickle law? The answer is no, we don't. And you can trust them because they're not CNN. That's not a political joke, that's an incredible reference. The video's linked in the description if you want to go check it out. Delaware. R-rated movies shall not be shown at drive-in theaters. Bam, I love it when this shit happens. A straightforward law that's totally true, so I don't have to do jack shit for my job. Statute 1366 of the Delaware Code. Still a law as of 2022. Whoever being the owner or operator of an outdoor motion picture theater exhibits or permits to be exhibited any film not suitable for minors or harmful to minors, Etc., etc., etc. They later described that a movie harmful to minors would be rated R or X, and it basically literally says if you own an outdoor theater, you can't show R or X rated movies. And I do get the logic behind this one. It'd be reasonable to assume a child would more likely be able to see an R rated film at a drive in as opposed to a closed off movie theater. Think about it if you're in a closed off regular movie theater, the kids gotta like get out and sneak into the other theater. If they're with their parents, they'll notice they're gone and there's some reasonable levels of it not happening. Whereas at a drive-in, if a kid wants to watch an R-rated movie, they just have to look out a different window of their car. It's super duper simple. Conceptually, this law makes perfect sense to me. I don't agree with it because I think sex, violence, and drugs should be the universally beloved phenomenon they deserve to be, but I completely get it. And the law specifies that if you break it, you get a class A misdemeanor. So we have actual legal repercussions on this one. There's no skirting around anything here. If the man wants to bust your ass for watching Black Dynamite outdoors, then you best shut the fuck up when grown folks is talking. Before we do Florida, I'm gonna give you a fat double package. If you're smart, sophisticated, and straight up paying attention, you've got the biggest shit-eating grin on your face right now. For all of you dweebs listening to me all tabbed or buried so far into your Nintendo Switch that you can see the built-in anti-piracy measures, let me give you a news flash. I already told you a weird law from Florida. It's illegal for an unmarried woman to parachute on Sunday in Florida. I cannot stress to you how often I heard this throughout my life as a child growing up in Florida. It was one of those little fun facts you'd hear all the way back in elementary school, and maybe once or twice a year someone will remind you that it exists. Now, scrounging around the internet finds literally hundreds and hundreds of repostings of this fact, 
everywhere from sites like Reddit to actual lawyers talking about little trivia law fun facts. It's illegal for an unmarried woman to parachute on Sunday in Florida. Doesn't exist. It is so strange for me to concede this one, but I'm really confident this was just an urban legend or a mistranslation from old women's rights laws or something. There's even a New York Times story about it being repealed in 2005, but they don't mention the specific law that was repealed or anything. They just say that it was repealed. And the only people saying this are a law are the websites that continually pass this fact around in circles, never a listing of a statute, a section of Florida law, a history and origin. There's not even a fucking inkling of a man named John Florida screaming, women can't do that shit in my town. Nothing. I even scanned all relevant sections of the 2004 Florida code, which would be a year before its alleged repeal. Nothing at all caught my eye like this. Now, this could have been a law at some point, but it's either never officially been on the books in any capacity or it was redacted in 2005 and then just wiped from the records. But either way, from what I can look up, it's not a law. And until someone proves me wrong, it never was a law to begin with. There's no written laws of it. There's no court cases about it. It's not a law. Update your trivia pages, you lazy content recycling cocksuckers, because I have once again proved something wrong in spectacular fashion. But what about what we came here for? If an elephant is left tied to a parking meter, the parking fee has to be paid just as it would for a vehicle. Again, not a law. But there is an actual story behind this one, so thankfully I can continue to do what I do every day in my daily life by ignoring women and respecting elephants. The Ringling Brothers Circus used to perform in Florida during the winter in the 1920s. There's a lot of guesswork that suggests that some Florida cities enacted laws that said something about parking meters to prevent the circus from having all their animals and equipment and vehicles and all their other shit from clogging up their whole town. But we are in the year of our Lord 2023 as of this video where the circus is long dead thanks to why Wi-Fi, and I was able to double check with my Wi-Fi that this law is not a thing, it never has been. It could have been a local city ordinance, but a state law? No. Go fuck yourself. Myth busted. Georgia. It's illegal to use animals as an inducement or to be given away as a prize. Okay, don't worry guys, don't worry, don't worry. I know we're dealing with an average of a middle school education. An inducement is something that persuades someone to do something. There, I've got you covered. Anywho, this is not a Georgia law. It is a law for a single county in Georgia. Section 4-1-9 of the Code of Ordinances for Athens, Clark County, Georgia does say this exact thing. You can't use animals as prizes or as incentives. Fuck you. Don't tell me what to do, Athens, Clark County. But everywhere else in Georgia, nothing. Go nuts. Choke a stork to death and offer its juicy thigh meat to anyone who can win a game of ring toss. It's totally fine if you're in Atlanta or Savannah. But if you happen to be in normal town, sit the fuck down. Hawaii. It's illegal to place coins in one's ears. Oh, thank God this one isn't in Florida. Uh, <laughs> I've been waiting to do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this feels so good. Oh shit. Oh, wait. I can do this in Hawaii or Florida or anywhere because this law very 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 likely never happened. And if it did, it was repealed over 100 years ago. Ah, eh, fuck it, I don't care. But I do have two more important things to tell you about this tale's origin. Number one, I am so very, very happy this isn't a law. Because you all know me, I am obsessed with utterly stupid things that have happened in comic books. This is the perfect time to show you the cover of DC Dollar Comics number 184. There's no law against putting pennies in my ears, super stoop! Stop it, prankster. Stop it, or I'll... I'll, I'll kill you! He's right! Superman, you better let him go, you bastard. He's absolutely right. But number two, and way more importantly, I used a very good handful of websites for researching this video. Mostly, I used online copies of all the state statutes as well as individual county and city codes. But one site I found in my study was idiotlaws.com. Now, that seems helpful, right? Well, it's been defunct since 2012, but it's a website where people used to post dumb laws they found, and it's all still there. It's straightforward stuff. I happened to find the page for this law right here. 
and I checked out the comments hoping someone would maybe leave something insightful for me to look into. Maybe a history lesson, a relevant statute I could use, anything. Instead, I found this, and I gotta say, it was more helpful than I ever could have imagined. Idiot, who would do that anyway? Duh! Mary, I think you're some stupid nine-year-old. You are a dumbass. You don't even know Mary, so shut the hell up. Don't talk shit about people you don't know. And by the way, I think you're just some fucking 13-year-old punk who thinks they're hot shit because they're uh, finally a teen well, by the way. You don't even count until you are at least 15, and even then, not really. So shut the fuck up, you motherfucking bitch-sucking fuck. God, I miss the edgy internet every single day of my life. Idaho. It's illegal to sweep dirt and other debris into the street. There's fucking pennies all over my floor now. Yeah, it's a law, but who cares? It's boring. Section 183906 of Idaho Charter just goes on and on and on and on and on about how you can't dirty up roads and highways, and it lists a lot of terms for what substances qualify as illegal, and you could easily classify dirt under them, and debris is explicitly listed, so debris is in there. With what, this law is boring. It, it, of course it's real. It's a fucking sanitation law. I would rather have the pennies and the ears thing be true, because that would be more exciting than this. Way to go, Idaho. You managed to be impossibly boring yet again. Illinois. It's legal for a minor to drink as long as he or she is enrolled in a culinary school program. Ah, what a twist. We're not outlawing something, we're making something happen. Good shit, Illinois. And an even better twist. Not only is this totally true, it's underselling the law. You can actually find a lot of ways to legally drink as a baby boy or girl in Illinois. Okay, so by baby boy or girl, I mean over the age of 18, but under 21. Obviously, if you're over 21, you can drink however the fuck you want in Illinois. It's this, you know what a liquor law is. But if you're the age 18, 19, or 20, you'll want to look at paragraph H of section 6-20 of Illinois' Liquor Control Act. It basically lists four ways you can get your own alcohol as a little rascal, which are tasting but not imbibing liquor during a class under supervision of an instructor, having permission from a college or university you attend to possess alcohol for some reason, participating in a relevant degree program that would include a section on handling or selling alcohol, and tasting but not imbibing in any educational context where you don't exceed tasting it six times per class and remain under an instructor's supervision. Well, there you go. We're right back to the logical leap. Would you look at that? Imbibing is another word for drinking, but when you say drink alcohol, do you mean drinking it and getting drunk? Do you mean drinking any of it? Now, it sounds to me like a case could be made where a student legally gets away with having a drink of alcohol in the right setting. I mean, six tastes of alcohol is like two gulps, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and say this one's true via logical leap. And I think I could swing either way on the meaning of the law, except Fuck you, because I tricked you. This law is 100% true, but the qualifiers we're looking at are totally wrong. When that strange law graphic listed as long as he or she's enrolled in a culinary school program, that's not actually how you can full on no consequences drink alcohol in Illinois as an under 21 year old. There are two ways that you can legally drink at any age in Illinois. The first is if you're at home in the presence of a parent or guardian. This means that you helpful parents out there can get your kids shit-faced in the comfort of your own home, but not someone else's kid. They're gonna have to go back to their own trailer park if they want to celebrate another great episode of Downton Abbey with some Mai Tais. But another one is if the alcohol is part of a religious ceremony, in which case the law actually protects you and prevents anyone from taking your liquor away if it's used for religious purposes. Just find Jesus, and you can get as fucking wasted as you want in any time, any context, anywhere in the state of Illinois. Take your communion by the gallon. Fuck it. I'm gonna go ahead and label this one as true. The wording on you can drink if you're in a culinary program is kind of vague, but there are laws in Illinois that let minors get drunk unrestricted for the most part. I'm gonna go ahead and say that the intention here of you can have a minor legally drink in Illinois yeah, we'll take it. And no, I won't adopt you so you can pound Jack Daniels on my coffee bar. That is for coffee, not for booze. Bought a Keurig and everything for it. Indiana. Mustaches are illegal if the bearer has a tendency to habitually kiss others. Nope. 
Search the entire 2022 Indiana Code, and the only time the word mustache even comes up is in the legal definitions for barbershops and cosmetology. This probably comes from an Indiana Supreme Court case in 1972, where they argued for a million years about how far the rights of personal style choices extend, such as whether or not you can have facial hair that can be restricted by the government. But that is a topic for boring history channels on this website, and not for my incredibly interesting factoid videos. This is not a law, it never was, and it's firmly rooted in the didn't happen category. Moving on, Iowa. One must obtain written permission from the city council before throwing bricks into a highway. This one's true, but only for the city of Mount Vernon, Iowa. So let's go ahead and mark this one as not a state law, put it in category three. But before we move on, I wanna read off the details of this law because it's not just a restriction on throwing bricks in the highway, it's pretty fucking wacky. Without permission of the evil council, you can't throw things into any highway or street, alley, sidewalk, public way, public ground, or public building. And the things you can't throw include stones and bricks. You can't shoot arrows, rubber guns, slingshots, air rifles, or dangerous instruments. Oh, and they specifically mention you can't launch any missiles without permission from the council either. Take that, Kim Jong-un, we finally stopped you, you motherfucker. Kansas. If two trains meet on the same track, neither shall pass until the other has passed. Never was a law. This may have been proposed to be a law, but there's a ton of sources that showed that this never was a law for even a second. In fact, we found the original source of this idea. It was a Wall Street Journal article commentating about politics at the time and proposed it as an example of a worthless law that politicians would argue over. Listen, as the master of satire and parody, I know what it's like when people take your obvious joke as complete fact, and that is literally exactly what happened here. This was a joke that spun off into a rumor that spun off into a real law. The only difference is everything I've ever said is factually accurate, while claiming this law has ever existed is bullshit. Kentucky. One may not dye a duckling blue and offer it for sale unless more than six are for sale at once. What? Why? And more importantly, why is this one true? Chapter 436, section 600 of the Kentucky Revised Statutes. There it is. And the funny thing is nearly every other law in this section was repealed back in 1975, except for this one. I have not been fully operating with you in good faith up until this point. The law doesn't say you can't dye a duckling blue. It says you can't dye any duck, bird, or rabbit that's under two months old and sell them without having at least six to sell. Which means we're back to logical leaping. The color here does not matter. Red, blue, blurple, green, light green, black, anti-yellow, does not matter. The law prohibits you from dyeing and coloring small animals and selling them in quantities of less than six, but why is that a law? It was amended as early as 1966, so it's not even one of those dumb baby America laws when they didn't know what the modern world was gonna be. The best explanation I can find is that it's an anti-animal cruelty law to prevent people from painting animals for Easter festivals and then selling them off to stupid buyers. Now, I suppose the logic here is the only people who would buy animals like this in bulk are farmers or people who need them for an actual purpose. But the people who would buy individual painted animals are snot-nosed little resurrection believers screaming, Mommy, mommy, I want the rabbit who's a real life marshmallow peep. If we really want to get really, really petty, and believe me, I love doing that, we could say that the law says that groups of six of these animals at a time is okay, while the rumored law says that you have to have more than six in a group. But that's stupid, and you're stupid, so let's not be stupid. This one is true via logical leap. Duckling isn't specified, the color blue isn't specified, but the quantity of which you can sell certain dyed animals is absolutely specified, and blue ducklings would fit under those specifications. Louisiana. You can be fined $500 for sending a surprise pizza delivery to someone's house. Good. Fuck those prankster kids. It's just the most unoriginal, uninteresting, lowest common denominator prank on the planet. I hope Louisiana starts throwing people in jail for this garbage. If you steal a McDonald's uniform and sneak behind the counter so you can reply, go fuck yourself when I order my morning McFlurry, that's a great prank. But calling up Domino's and telling him, oh yeah, this guy 
totally wants 10 pizzas. <laughs> I hope your family has to cancel Christmas this year. And thankfully this one is true, because as instant recorded content becomes more and more mainstream, more and more talentless, uninteresting losers will try to use prank and publicity stunt content as a dream gateway to stardom and a reality gateway to unceasing depression and skilllessness by age 30. Either way, this one is a law by logical leap though. I don't have much to say because it's pretty straightforward and boring. There's no specifying of a surprise pizza delivery in Louisiana Statute 1468.8, which is a law against unauthorized ordering of goods and services. But the $500 fine is written there, as are a bunch of details on it being illegal to force people to receive unauthorized goods or services, especially if their intent is to harass someone. Also, the person who's being thrust upon isn't legally obligated to pay anything, which is the same thing as deciding who picks up a tab in a restaurant. Either way, nothing here about pizza, everything else is true, it's true via logical leap. Main, it's illegal to park in front of Dunkin' Donuts. This is a real goofy one because it is 100% true but only for the city of South Berwick. So it's not a state law. Don't, don't skip ahead. Look at my fingers. Look, I can move them, each and every one. Don't click off to that recommended video just yet because your attention span is completely destroyed. Well, unless it's another one of my videos, in which case, go ahead, but after this video. Stick around for this. This story's actually pretty funny. South Berwick has a peculiar Dunkin' Donuts. During peak hours in the morning, it can get very, very busy despite how really tiny and small of a store it is. It is such a small store, it doesn't even have parking spots. Since this is America, the land where the motto is FUCK YOU, I'M IN A HURRY, people don't bother waiting in the drive through if it's busy. They just run up on the curb and park in the street. By my estimations, if there's an innocent child outside, Americans will make sure they smack them up a little bit as they order their extra large double pump caramelized coffee with extra caramel. So the law specifically reads, no person shall park a vehicle at any time upon any of the streets or parts of streets described, Main Street West in front of Dunkin' Donuts to a point 25 feet south. All I know is if that Dunkin' Donuts closes and gets replaced with a different store, South Berwick is gonna be the most legally embarrassing city in America. They have Dunkin' Donuts in their official bylaws. But who am I kidding? As long as calories are drinkable, Dunkin' Donuts will live on forever. Maryland. It is a violation to be in a public park with a sleeveless shirt. $10 fine. Mm, nothing. Nothing about this anywhere. Nowhere in there does it even specify a $10 fine anywhere in Maryland's constitution. And every time I find another website or listing of it, they all link back to each other in an incorrect Ouroboros with no statues cited or historical sources anywhere. Why are these little trivia listings both wrong and bad at their job? I scanned the legal code of Maryland and in my idle browsing looking for the law, I found a much more interesting one that I've never seen mentioned on any of these trivia law sites. Maryland statutes. Title three, which is the section for miscellaneous crimes. Subtitle three, which is for sexual crimes. Section 3-322 and 323, which pertain to unnatural perverted sexual practice and incest respectively. According to these sections, oral sex is completely outlawed in Maryland. Entirely. I'm serious. You can't put a sexual organ in your mouth. You can't put your sexual organs in other people's mouths. You're not allowed. Now that I have seen on law trivia funny website, the internet. Fine. But in the next section, the very next section under it, you cannot legally engage in vaginal intercourse with someone you can't legally marry as notated by the family law article. So no oral ever and no vaginal sex with your family. Do you know what this means? It means in Maryland, you can legally have anal sex with your dad and vice versa. <laughs> Massachusetts, it's illegal to own an explosive golf ball. <sighs> Thank you, Massachusetts, from the bottom of my heart for keeping this simple. This is 100% real, it's 100% current, and it's 100% explicit. Well, not as explicit as Maryland, but God, if I was a lawyer, I would obliterate the defense. Massachusetts General Laws Fire Prevention Chapter Section 55. To summarize, you can't make an exploding golf ball. 
You can get fined $500 for the first offense, followed by $1,000 and a year in jail for any other offense. I don't even care. I just really fucking hate Maryland right now. Michigan. It's illegal for women to cut their hair without their husband's permission. Not even fucking close. Since 1850, Michigan State Constitution legally entitles a woman to her own property, whether it was acquired before or after marriage. That includes her hairstyle, and nothing in the laws before that says anything like this. In fact, all laws made before 1850 in Michigan never once talk about property except one about compensating someone if their property is confiscated for public use. Michigan's government wasn't even enough of a thing prior to 1850 to enforce such a law and conceivably make it legal. The only law slightly relevant to this would be true via logical leap. Under Michigan's laws for cosmetology services, you legally can't give anyone a haircut without a license unless they're a member of your family. But do you see how that that's the exact fucking opposite. If you were my sister and I wanted to give you a haircut, this would not only be a very strange episode of my little sister's hair is far too long, the anime, but because we're related, you, legally speaking, wouldn't need anyone's permission for me to do that. If we weren't related, it would be illegal no matter what, because I'm only certified to cut hair in Cambodia after all those stupid sanctions I was given in the 80s. Oh, oh, and speaking of the 80s, all of these laws that I just mentioned, all of them, were repealed in 1981 anyway. Anyway, so even if you really, really wanted to stretch the truth to make this one count, you'd still be wrong. This one is absolutely the wrongest of any that we have looked at today. There is absolutely zero precedent or context or evidence behind this one existing. In fact, most origin sources that found this law are fucking joke books from the 90s and 2000s. By the way, big, big respect to Barry Harrison on Stack Exchange for doing a ton of research on this one and writing a huge write up about why this one is bubkiss. I'll go ahead and link that in the description. Give this one last place. It's nothing. It's not interesting. It's not funny. It's not true. And God, I still fucking hate Maryland. Minnesota. It is illegal to loiter around Minnesota's public buildings. Minneapolis, Minnesota is a pretty big fucking city in Minnesota, right? Let's read their actual website right now. While loitering is not illegal... You can report loitering or suspicious behavior. Okay, maybe that wasn't good enough. Let's scroll down in that section about loitering and see if it specifies if you loiter on public property, because that's what the fucking weird law just said. You know, that would include public buildings. Loitering is not against the law. I'm gonna assume that if one of the most prominent major cities lists that this is not illegal twice on their website, this law's bullshit. Not even gonna look this one up. I'm just gonna give a huge middle finger to all the copy and paste slop jockeys who throw this into content lists and Reddit posts in an attempt to look quirky. Also, the fact that Minneapolis's website has a section saying, by the way, someone being of a certain race and being poor doesn't mean they're loitering makes me think this is one of those good old fuck black people laws. Shame on you if you thought you knew a fun piece of trivia. All you did was perpetuate bullshit because your lazy ass doesn't ever web search what you read. My audience and I win again. Mississippi. It is illegal to cram your penis inside of an insect unless you ejaculate on the queen of the colony. No, I'm just kidding. Stop playing with your phone while watching an informative, life-changing video. It's embarrassing. The actual law is, you can be fined up to $100 for using profane language in public spaces. This one sentence of legality is true and even gets its own section in the Mississippi Code. Statute 97-29-47, profanity or drunkenness in public place. It literally just says don't curse. Well, okay, don't curse in a public space in the presence of two or more people. It's pretty silly, but it, it does say that. It says you can be fined up to $100, whatever. Oh, oh, and um, oh, and up to, up to 30 days in jail. What the fucking shit fuck? I was going to swear a lot lot more in protest of this stupid law. I was gonna work every single profanity I knew right into this one, but YouTube's got that policy about excessive swearing being demonetizable and being demonetized basically means you're soft blocked from the platform. And I worked really hard on this video, so I'm gonna be the good little bitch that I am and play along. What in the flying fruit lovers kind of punishment is that? I swear to dip that silly shenanigans are a wicked witch all the way up and down my whoopsie rod. Slap my badonk and call me dandy boy if I ever admit that mother stuffer punishment is even worth the gosh damn 
dang gee wish punishment attached to it. Fuck. Missouri. It's illegal to drive with an uncaged bear in your car. Okay, Maryland. You're off the hook. This one. I hate this one more than anything in the world. This law took me an entire day of cross-referencing as well as me asking two different lawyers about it. Buckle the fuck up because things are going to get legally gray and you're going to learn just how dumb our legislative system can be. The difficulty began from the fact that people love to spout these laws off with no sources whatsoever. I found an article on both LinkedIn and LegalZoom about crazy laws that still exist today. Guess what? This law doesn't still exist today, but it did exist at one point. In 1909, I found one article that mentioned that fact specifically, and it was from a guy reading the Missouri Law Code from 1909 just for fun to point out silly laws in it. Big, big thank you to Robert J. Campos and Associates for writing their blog post because it's the only way I got to really deep dive into this one. I searched for literal hours trying to find if this thing wormed its way into the modern Missouri revised statutes. Now, back in the good old days, Missouri's Book of Laws followed the classic statute format. The law about uncaged bears and their transportations was designated Statute 2329. But in 1949, Missouri totally changed how their statutes are organized to use a decimal reference number system and essentially rewrote their entire code of laws. There literally hasn't been a statute 2329 in the Missouri Revived Statutes about anything for about 80 years. But don't lose hope. There is a law about bears in the 2022 Missouri Revived Statutes, and it says you can't wrestle a bear. That's it. Okay, so side note, it's, it's actually that law is pretty funny on its own because the first line says you are guilty of bear wrestling if you wrestle a bear but that's it the entire rest of the law book for missouri as of current dictation says not a goddamn thing about bears except the fact you can't challenge them to a title shot at the upcoming wrestlemania i even found the only reference number that lists a statute 2329 the missouri revised statutes and it's a property law that has nothing to do with bears whatsoever meaning it could be talking about an entirely different outdated law in the first place. If Missouri, during the reformation of the Code of Laws in 1949, set out one that says creation of new statutes repeals the old ones, then we're done here. The new laws will then officially replace the old ones entirely, and the new ones say nothing about uncaged bears. So they've officially hit the old reset button, and our new legal game is cut and dry. Now here's where things get tricky, and where I had to speak with my lawyer your friend who showed up earlier in the video for Colorado, and his dad, who is an even older, more powerful and knowledgeable lawyer to confirm that I'm right. There's basically two ways you can generate a legal case. In other words, there's two ways you can establish that something is illegal. The first is obvious. Point to the law that says it's illegal. Okay, Mr. Billy Kid Butcher, it seems you butchered 12 kids this afternoon, and while well, Statute 7 of the Missouri Code says that, well, you can't do that. That is illegal. Go to jail now. Or if there's no explicit law tackling something, you can point to a previous case that makes a legal decision on the matter. Well, Jeremy, it seems you've been arrested for photoshopping extra buttholes on your co-worker's Instagram beach photos, and while there's no law that specifically says you can't do that, I think the 2018 case of the state versus the Photoshop butthole bandit shows sufficient proof that you shouldn't be able to give people extra buttholes with Photoshop and it should be illegal. So you're now gonna go to jail for 11 million years. I looked and trust me, I looked. I cannot find a single case that has ever in any respect referenced old Missouri statute 2329, nor has anyone in Missouri ever ever been charged under similar circumstances, which means because the law cannot be found in the current Missouri revised statutes, 
And because there is no court case to set a legal precedent, this law no longer exists. It is not a law. Boom, get fucked. Absolutely all of you clickbaiting motherfuckers out there, get fucked. Do your damn research next time. I will see you in court for libel. Oh, and you better bring a lawyer because I don't think I'll need one. Montana, it's illegal to bring a rocket with you to city council meetings. It's only in the city of Billings, Montana, so it's not a Montana law. You can get it the Hannah Montana fuck out of here. It's a sample sensical law. You're not allowed to bring concealed weapons, firearms, or explosives to city council meetings, and they specify rockets. That makes sense to me. Let's continue to keep this simple and just move on. It's not a law. Nebraska. It is illegal for anyone with venereal disease to marry. Yep. This one's a law, all right. Chapter 42 of the Nebraska Revised Statutes, Statute 42, titled Minimum Age Affliction with Venereal Disease Disqualification. You can see where this is going. To get married in Nebraska, you gotta be 16 years old and not have itchy genitals. That's about it. Yeehaw! Nevada, it is illegal to ride a camel on the highway. Very likely a proposed law that never actually became a law because the only sources linking this one rely on anecdotal evidence. Virginia City and Nevada had a lot of camel usage in the 1800s to the point that people discussed maybe, maybe there should be a city or a state law and this sort of thing, but Nah, didn't really happen. It's not important. Just keep in mind it's not a law. Because something that probably makes this look way more credible though is the awkward and 100% real law observing ancient camels in Nevada. Nevada Statute 236.075 specifies that May will be designated as Archaeological Awareness and Historic Preservation Month. In Nevada, an American camel fossils are one of the creatures included as one of the wondrous types of animal bones that you can find in the ground and should be proud that you found. Nevada loves camels, and you'll probably still get pulled over if you ride one on the highway for numerous traffic laws, but can they book you for one that says to not do that specifically? No. New Hampshire. As of 1973, it's illegal to carry away or collect seaweed at night. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, this overly specific law. Come on. Come on. Oh shit, it's real. Oh. Okay. Section 207, 48 of the New Hampshire statute says, as of 1973, it's illegal to carry away or collect seaweed at night. They hit the nail on the fucking head with that one, didn't they? New Jersey, it's illegal to wear a bulletproof vest while committing a violent crime. Okay, we're on a fucking roll now. This one's also true. Fits all snugly wuggly into section 2C30-13 in the New Jersey Revised Statutes. The law titled Unlawful Use of Body Vests says you can't strap on some good old fashioned Kevlar if you plan to commit murder, manslaughter, robbery, sexual assault, burglary, kidnapping, criminal escape, or us. Alt. Erotic roleplay and high fashion show catwalks are not on there, so go nuts if that's your plan. Some people out there might find this one redundant or unnecessary, but I, I think it's justifiable in a way to prevent escalation of force. Sure, no one's gonna be aware that this law exists, but if a guy tries to rob a bank and the judge at the hearing says, oh, by the way, uh, you're gonna you're gonna do an extra five years in jail because you wore a body armor thing and you expected a shootout, so, you know. There's a chance that's, that'll have some effect on a future rude dude with attitude looking to score some quick cash when they hear about how bullshit that is. New Mexico. State officials ordered 400 words of sexual explicit material to be cut from Romeo and Juliet. This probably happened, but sources say that it was a decision by the New Mexico Board of Education for the 1984 school year. And there's even a New York Times article from 1984 that confirmed it happened. You know, you know honestly, some of people watching this, some of my viewers might be able to confirm this one as a primary source. This one was a bit confusing and hard to research beyond that, but from what I can gather, this decision only affected New Mexico schools, not any other institution nor any statewide anything like it's not going to be censored in the library so it's not really a law it's just a mandate for the school board either way if you went to school in new mexico i'm going to need you to confirm two things for me in the comments one was romeo and juliet censored during your time in public school especially if you went there in 1984 and two 
Was Heisenberg really local high school chemistry teacher Walter White? New York. It's illegal to wear slippers after 10 o'clock at night. Nope. Uh uh. Not a law. Best I've got is it's anecdotal evidence that wearing slippers that late outside would attract rats from how dirty they'd become, and it was a law of public sanitation, but it, it's nowhere to be found in anything. It's not on the books, it's not in anything. Go nuts, wear your slippers wherever the fuck you want. North Carolina, elephants may not be used to plow cotton fields. Oh boy, we got more circus hate with this one. Good, fuck the circus. The circus fucking sucks. Unless it's Cirque du Soleil, that shit kind of rules. Anyway, this is another rumor law that popped up from another circus. You know the Florida law was because of the Ringling Brothers? Well, this one is courtesy of Barnum and Bailey Circus. So the part about elephants plowing cotton fields was completely true and did happen. There's historical books from the late 1800s that discuss and contain drawings recreating the incidents. Barnum and Bailey would send their elephants out to plow fields as a publicity stunt to promote the circus. Now, the anti-elephant law was said to have come to prevent them from doing that because the elephants damaged the shit out of the crop fields and the resulting tourism dollars weren't enough to justify having to accept that big dumb gray motherfucking thing just killed our whole food supply. But the important question, was this ever a law? Not from what I can gather. At least this one has a somewhat credible origin story, unlike a lot of the others on this list, but if I don't see it in the state code and I don't see it in the court records, then it doesn't mean shit to me. Obliterate your yearly harvest with some proboscidea of your choosing for all I care. North Dakota. It's illegal to set off fireworks past 11 p.m. Cross-check that bullshit with me, cause this ain't no law. Go to North Dakota Century Code as of 2022, Title 23 for the section on health and safety. We'll be looking at chapter 15, which is literally titled Fireworks. I read the entire thing. This is not a law. Different cities and counties in North Dakota might have their own specific restrictions on days and hours that fireworks are allowed, but nowhere in the entire fireworks section of North Dakota law does it mention anything about time. They talk about defining what a firework is, who can legally sell them, when they can be sold, preventing the outlaw of public firework displays, and the rights of the fire marshal or sheriff to confiscate fireworks, but that's it. Now your neighbors might not like it, and you might be breaking some other laws like noise complaints and disturbing the peace or the don't blow your house the fuck up with a bottle rocket mandate, but you can sure as shit shoot off some sparklers at 11.01 p.m. Ohio, it's illegal to get a fish drunk. Hey, what a coincidence! Here's a post on the Ohio subreddit that's only 14 days old as of the time of me writing this script and taking these screenshots. What's that? It seems to be about the weird laws in Ohio. Let's read the comments. This text has been circulating around the internet for decades. It's likely all apocryphal, as indicated by the fact that there aren't any citations for any of these laws, which if they were real, should all be online. One time I actually was annoyed enough to track down the so-called illegal to get a fish drunk law, and there's nothing there. Though there are general laws about pollution into waterways. Ah, well, thank you, mother hen laid three eggs on the Ohio subreddit. You just saved me precious minutes of having to give a shit about this obviously bullshit law. Oklahoma, it's illegal to wrestle a bear. I just told you that in Missouri, it is literally illegal to wrestle a bear. Do I have to do this one again? This is not a weird law. This is not, this is not uh, surprising. This is pretty common. Y you guys better have a law against this or I'm gonna be pissed. Okay, thank God they do. And they even include horse tripping there in the same law as like animal cruelty. Okay. And this law doesn't even just prevent bear wrestling. It prevents fucking the bear up. According to the law, you can't remove the bear's claws, yank out its teeth, sever its tendons, or dope it up on drugs. <laughs> Holy shit, this implies that this was all super common practice in Oklahoma before this law. And I'm kind of sad I missed the Sooner State's bear wrestling arc. Go ahead, paint by numbers YouTube commenters and make your generic cocaine bear jokes, even though that happened in Georgia. I'll be busy daydreaming of the incredible high stakes bear wrestling anime that we'll never get to see. I'd call it, my bear's tendons can't possibly be this severed. Oregon, it's illegal to go hunting in a cemetery. Volume four. Chapter 166, Section 645 of the Oregon Revised Statutes. Hunting in cemeteries is prohibited. That's the first line. That's the law. I still have 15 states left to cover in this video as long as fuck. Let's move on out of here. Pennsylvania. It's illegal to ask a fortune teller where to dig for buried treasure. Ugh, you see that? 
That's the classic logical leap, and it's a pretty fucking amazing one like the one I just did. Title 18, Chapter 71, Section 7104 of the Pennsylvania Consolidated and Unconsolidated Statutes does have a section on fortune telling. It gives a long, lengthy, exhaustive list of types of fortune telling that is illegal. You can't predict the future, read palms, enact curses, enchant objects, instill good or bad luck, raise the dead? make a person marry someone else, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on and on, and it is amazingly specific and goofy at the same time. And right towards the end, there is, and I'm gonna read the line here, you cannot use fortune telling to tell where to dig for treasure. Well, case closed, right? That's a true law. Not exactly. All of this is only illegal if you do it for money. I can read your love lines, I can give you an energized jade crystal, I can make you drink my magic wealth potion that's just half parts bleach and the other half part more bleach as much as I want, as long as I don't charge you money for it. The instant I try to take payment for any of that, it's illegal. So saying it's illegal to ask a fortune teller where to dig for buried treasure technically isn't the truth. It is illegal to pay a fortune teller to tell you where the buried treasure is. And I'm gonna call this one true via logical leap because I'm gonna assume that the fortune teller in most people's consciousness is the profession. It's implied that a fortune teller is performing their fortune telling, not just doing it. This, yeah, no, I could see, I see both sides of this where people say, well, that's not the law. And other people say, no, that is what the law means. It kind of depends on how you're defining fortune telling. Either way, imagine if the law said it's illegal to force a doctor to assist in medical duties when they aren't scheduled to work. Now, the law there is probably an asset of fair labor laws, and it's not written as, yeah, my buddy Steve's a doctor and I asked him to look at this rash at his house over the weekend and now I'm going to jail for five to ten. Again, it's not word for word illegal, and I have a feeling I know how a judge would rule in this case. They're looking at the money flow, the scam aspect of it, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that this one through the right circumstances is true. Rhode Island. Biting off someone's limb will result in one to 20 years in prison. Okay, I have a follow-up question before we get to this one. Where the hell is this legal? Is there a state in the United States that looks at clear-cut assault and cannibalism and says, oh yeah, dude, go for it, that's rad as hell. Of course this is a law. Where isn't this a law? Not just in America, but like in the mo most of the countries on earth. Let's give credit where credit is due. Rhode Island does specifically have a provision for this exact scenario in place. And it's actually one of the coolest laws I've ever heard. We'll go ahead and go to the Rhode Island general laws. Title 11 for criminal offenses. You're gonna wanna go to chapter 29 for the mayhem chapter. And then go to section one for the penalty for mutilation or disabling. Uh, sorry about that. It's just that law was so cool. I just I don't know what happened. I blacked out and ended up doing that for an hour. Anyway, the law says if you maliciously, purposely, or voluntarily put out an eye, slit a nose, ear, lip, or cut or bite off a limb or body part of someone else, you will go to jail for 1 to 20 years. I don't know, man. I've seen some after-school rumbles that got pretty heated. Although, if this law puts more children in jail, I'm all for it. It's too damn hard to buy a PlayStation 5 these days anyway. South Carolina. Horses may not be kept in bathtubs. What the hell is with laws and equines taking a ride in a tub slide? I immediately want to call this one horse hockey because of how often the idea of putting a work animal in a bathing environment gets brought up with this malarkey. Anywho, I combed the entirety of the South Carolina Code of Laws section on livestock and found nothing. No sources for this online, no cases referenced, nothing. This law never existed. People really need to get more creative with their modern American mythology beyond, dude, one time there was this donkey and he floated in a bathtub so far that the town made it illegal. South Dakota, it's illegal to sleep in a cheese factory. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a heavy heart that I have to announce 
There is no law preventing you from sleeping in a cheese factory. Dairy plant owners of South Dakota, prepare your business for the inevitable onslaught of sleeping bag warriors and pillow fighters to breach your hollowed grounds in search of dreamful rest. This hearsay law seems to have originated from South Dakota's Food Service Code, which discusses living and sleeping quarters in relation to food production. All it really says is anywhere that people live can't also operate as a food production plant at the same time. And if the food establishment does have places as people live and sleep like a hotel or a bed and breakfast, they have to be in separate spaces from the restaurant and food production areas. Now, some of you might jump up in your seats and say, aha, that's a logical leap right there. That you can't legally sleep in a food production plant. And if that plant makes cheese, it's illegal to sleep in the cheese factory. Calm down. Just like what I smother my face in whenever I visit your mother, there's a big butt. Read the supposed law again. It's not illegal to sleep in a cheese factory. Not at all. Not under this law. It is illegal to run sleeping quarters and food service in the same location. But you are more than welcome to sleep in the cheddar department all you want. You're probably violating a ton of health and safety laws, but not this one specifically. Tennessee, it's illegal to share your Netflix password. Boy, Tennessee was really ahead of the curve here, and I should barely need to talk about this one. A large number of you already know that this is absolutely true because it was ratified just 12 years ago in 2011. And it was controversial. Hell, it's even got its own Wikipedia page. The affectionate nickname, the Tennessee Login Law. You'd think people would be more upset that Tennessee predicted the future on this one than anything. How? Well, they pissed everyone off by trying to limit Netflix account sharing, a move that would be copied by... Netflix themselves, well, in the last couple months, actually. There's been mutters of Netflix hating the fact that people are happy and just want a smidgen more money out of good, hardworking folks for years now. But just a few days ago, they seem to have been rolling out emails telling people to stop password sharing or else. If anything, this law is redundant because the way this came to be isn't as cut and dry as you'd think it is. It's a weaving passage of legal definitions that I don't think reaches to be a logical leap, but clearly isn't straightforwardly saying it's illegal to share your Netflix password. In statute, 391106 of the Tennessee Code, there is a list of definitions to be used when talking about criminal offenses. I've got the version from 2010 behind me on the screen before the Tennessee login law was ratified. One of those definitions in question is services. Before 2011, this law mentioned that the definition of a service included skill, professional service, transportation, telephone, mail, gas, electricity, steam, water, cable, television, or or other public services, accommodations in hotels, restaurants, or elsewhere, admissions to exhibits, use of vehicles or other movable property, and any other activity or product considered in ordinary course of business to be a service. Now you think that would be enough to cover streaming entertainment services with that last line, but in the eyes of lawmakers, it wasn't. In 2011, they added the phrase entertainment subscription service to that list of qualifying services there. Isn't that hilariously redundant? The line and any other activity or product considered in the ordinary course of business to be a service should absolutely be enough for any lawyer to rectify Netflix under that idea, but they made sure to cram entertainment subscription service in there just to make sure they could fuck over people who were password sharing. And the double irony being that Netflix's current policies make this even more redundant, when this law was totally redundant in the first place. I'm gonna stop saying redundant now. Then it's an easy walk over to statute 39-14-104, which describes theft of services. And from there, it's pretty self-explanatory that you can't just steal services, it's illegal. And now we have a definition of the word services that encompasses Netflix explicitly. So no, the law doesn't word for word say it's illegal to share your Netflix password, but it does very bluntly make it clear that password sharing for any streaming service could be considered illegal in the state of Tennessee. It's not a logical leap. The law is true. It's just this clickbaity, thrown around digestible version on the internet is too overly specific. Texas, it's illegal to sell someone's eye. <sighs> you smell that? That's the smell of a law as clear cut and dry as Texas barbecue, my friend. 
Section 48.02 of the Texas Penal Code. Not only are you not allowed to sell someone's eye, but you can't buy, sell, acquire, receive, or transfer any human organs in any monetary transaction. This doesn't even need to be written as a logical leap because when they define organs, eyes are listed as one of them. This is by the books. I'm sorry, illegal organ harvesting rings in Texas everywhere. I have failed you and I am full of regret, but I still got both my eyes. Utah. It's illegal to sell alcohol during emergency situations. This one's definitely a law. <sighs> okay, deep breath. Utah Code, Title 32B, Alcoholic Beverage Control Act, Chapter 4, Criminal Offenses and Procedure Act, Part 4, Sale, Purchase, Possession, and Consumption, Section 407, Unlawful Sale, Offer for Sale, or Furnishing During Emergency. Oh, what a mouthful. Anyway, it's a law that prevents you from getting a mouthful of booze during an emergency, but only if a state of emergency has been declared by the governor and the director of that emergency site declares that everyone in the area is no longer allowed to sell alcohol in that area. So is this one true? Not really. It's the classic clickbait law syndrome where it's too broad to be true. You can sell alcohol during a general emergency, no problem. After all, 99% of liquor store owners could have a shootout happening right outside their doors and they'll still remind the customer inside that Jack Daniels is currently two for one. Now, if a landslide is about to decimate the entire state or terrorists have taken over all of Salt Lake City, then yeah, you can probably get arrested for trying to make a quick buck or two by drowning the problem in tequila shots. But as for general General regular emergencies or one declared in a part of Utah that you are not currently in? Nah, go nuts and get fucked up. Law's not gonna apply here. Vermont. Women must obtain written permission from their husbands to wear false teeth. Thank the fucking Lord people did their homework on this one, because this one is genuinely amazing. This one made the whole video worthwhile. Remember earlier when I discussed there's two ways for something to become legal precedent? The first is if there's a written law about it. But the other is if a previous case brought up a legal ruling that could be applied to a new crime. In 1856, Vermont had the smackdown of the century with the case of Gilman v. Andrus. The whole case reports written in 1800s English and literally no human being on the planet understands that language, so it's not even worth trying to decipher. But in summation, it ruled women cannot wear dentures without express written permission from their husbands. So technically speaking, if I lived in Vermont and wanted to sue my wife for not asking me if it was okay that she bought George Washington's replica teeth and crammed them in her mouth, I not only could do that within the extent of the law, I would have a reasonable argument to win the lawsuit. Because of that previous case, this legislation is now part of the Vermont common law, which means that while it is not officially on the books, it has weight and merit in deciding legal rulings today. And that means via technicality, this is a law. Oh, yeah, baby. This one is a law. Now, it's definitely never been enforced, but it has not legally been overruled or repealed in any capacity in the last 167 years. It is only a matter of time before something happens that uses that one court case about the woman wearing dentures as part of its argument, and then we're all going to collectively have to pause and say, wait, women can't wear dentures without their husband's permission in Vermont? How the fuck is that still a thing? And realize it is. Common law is the law. This law has legal precedent. It's never been overturned. And if you are a woman in Vermont, you technically legally need written permission from your husband to wear dentures. The end. Good luck, ladies of Burlington. May God help you on this one. Virginia. Children are not to go trick-or-treating on Halloween. Hey, I think this one's the most recent one on the list. This happened in like 2019. How scary is that? Ooh. Anyway, there's, there's nothing to be scared of if you're in Virginia and you want to trick-or-treat on Halloween because we're back to the old city ordinance, but not a state law trick. There's a handful of cities in Virginia that did add anti-trick-or-treating laws, such as chit, chis, cheap, cheap, skip. Put it on the, put it on the wall. Cheap, 
Cheesecake Virginia, but the laws only apply to kids older than 12 or 14, depending on the city. And from what I've read, absolutely no one has ever enforced this law ever. So go have fun and get some candy, little gremlins, because not even the law can stop you now. It's not illegal. Washington. The harassing of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, or other undiscovered subspecies is a felony punishable by a fine and or imprisonment. I wish this one was real so bad. I really, really do, because the implications of this being real would be huge. But unfortunately, it's a formality put in place by two counties in Washington. Scamania County and Whatcom County, counties named after the greatest third wave of Scott tour of all time and the confusing time on the internet in the 1990s respectively, both have laws preventing the harassment of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and any other related creature. So right off the bat, that's not a state law doesn't count. But those laws also go on to posit all of this as theoretical and not fact. The laws say if... Sasquatch exists, he would rightfully be classified as an endangered species, and therefore it's illegal to harass it. As excited as I was, they unfortunately don't say anything under the assumption that Swamp Ape is out there and ready to kill. All of this was done in response to the Sasquatch craze of the 1960s, thanks to the Patterson-Gimlin film. Yeah, you know, this thing. This one right here. But by this point, I don't care. I got really excited that somewhere out there, a Washington politician saw Sasquatch and floored it to his office to draft up the quickest bill he could to protect him before it's too late. Ah oh well. At least there's still my cryptid dream of having sex with every alien species of the Federation like Commander Shepard did. I'm Commander Hugbees, and your ass is the finest one on the Citadel. West Virginia, it's illegal to use profane language in public. That's the same fucking law as the fucking Mississippi one. This list is getting lazy. We only have two states to go and you're repeating now? Come on. It's real. Statute 61-8-15 of the West Virginia Code. I'll give you credit for putting an actual real law fine, but fuck it. I'm picking a new one from the internet because I'm tired of the same fucking thing over and over. Let's go with, okay, let's go. Okay, here's, here's one I looked up. Here's one I paused and looked up in between takes. Here's one that's circulating the internet a lot. I did not make this up for the video. You can Google this if you don't believe me. You can legally have sex with an animal in West Virginia if the animal is under 40 pounds. Ah, you, f ah, you foolish, foolish people of the internet. That's not a real law. Come on, don't be ridiculous because you can legally have sex with any animal that you want in West Virginia because West Virginia doesn't have anti-bestiality laws. There is no national law against bestiality in the United States. However, all but two of the states as of 2022 have laws to prevent its practice. The two that don't are New Mexico and West Virginia. In 2018, West Virginia did put forth a bill to outlaw bestiality. It would be Statute 61-8-32 entitled Bestiality Prohibited Penalties. Well, seeing as the 2022 West Virginia Code only goes up to Statute 6-8-31 before moving Moving on to chapter 61A, I'm going to assume that bill never passed. Congratulations, citizens of West Virginia. That donkey that sleeps in your bathtub is totally down to fuck, and you can absolutely be down to fuck it back. Wisconsin, it's illegal to serve butter substitutes in prison. Guys, can we stop with the obviously silly, stupid laws? Yeah, yeah, Wisconsin's known for their cheese and their dairy and all that. Yeah, okay, do you really, really think they would go as far as to outlaw margarine? Well, they did. That's the actual story behind this totally real law. Margarine was banned entirely in Wisconsin all the way back in 1895 as a way to protect their precious dairy industry. It stayed banned all the way until 1967, but a lot of the side effect laws kind of remained in there. Not only is it illegal to serve margarine to prisoners in Wisconsin, but it's also illegal to serve it to students and medical patients. And the only exception for that is if the institution superintendent, such as the warden or the doctor or the teacher, requires the substitution for margarine be made for the health of the person in question. Oh, and we can get even dumber. Restaurants in Wisconsin are not allowed to use margarine as a substitute for table butter unless the customer specifically orders it. But don't freak out too hard if you still want to skirt the line. The law allows lard, cream cheese, cheese food compounds, and any other dairy product exclusively made from cow's milk to operate unrestricted as long as the label clearly shows that it's not butter. Eh? Eh? Look it up yourself, it's all right there in the bylaws. 
Which one? Well, the margarine regulations, of course. And I'm not kidding. Chapter 97.18 of the Wisconsin Statutes and Annotations is the oleomargarine regulations. Now, oleomargarine is just the old timey way from saying margarine. It's the same exact thing. You guys really don't fuck around with dairy, do you? You cheese curd eating fucks. And finally, Wyoming, the crown jewel of this series. Because Wyoming and I have such a loving, storied relationship. You can watch that blossom in the video I'm gonna go ahead and put in the description. I am always, always excited that we leave Wyoming for last. Wyoming, any new buildings that cost over $100,000 must have 1% of funds spent on artwork for it. I sure hope this one's a law because if people come to Wyoming to see your fancy new super building, you may as well trick them into staying a little bit with some fancy art because you know for a fact they're gonna leave right afterwards. But more importantly, is this true? Can I get a drum roll, please? Put a, put a drum roll here for dramatic effect. Everyone's gonna get excited. It is! Wyoming Statute 16-6-802. Any building that costs over $100,000 must spend at least 1% of its budget on artwork for it. There it is, plain as day. Congratulations, Wyoming. You did it, son. I'm proud of you. I think I'll do absolutely nothing about it and finish up my video now. But you can, you can remember that you did something or whatever. I don't really care. And so we've reached the end of a video that was way, way, way longer than I thought it would be. I probably made a mistake here or there because the law is really tricky and it's really, really difficult to reliably find laws that might still exist somewhere in the weaving paths of justice, especially when your only real resource is the internet. People don't tend to publish these things for some reason. Although a law may not be on the books anymore, there could be a rogue court case out there that makes it a law. Or it could have never been a law to begin with, but legal precedent has made justice decisions sway in its favor regardless. But all of this ties into my point with this video. All of it. The reason this video is so long on such a simple concept of let's fact check some silly laws from each state. Why I had to do so much legal explaining on how these laws become laws and what it means legally. The reason I had to consult my lawyer friend and his even more powerful lawyer father for clarification on a good handful of these. My overall message with this video is that nobody researches a goddamn thing. Nobody does their homework. No one on the internet ever does the legwork beyond consumption and viral spread. Nobody questions what they read. Half of these laws from my research are not real. Half. Some of them are debatable and others are laws but not state laws, but a good portion of them very obviously never happened. But how many people spread these trivia facts daily thinking they're real? There's a good excuse to back even the most ridiculous ones up every time. Oh, that's that's not a law that's ever enforced. Or, yeah, that was a law, but they repealed it. But back in the 1800s, that was totally illegal. That's just not the case for a lot of these. And my frustration lies in the question. How long are we gonna keep doing this? How long are people gonna keep copying and pasting this blatantly false information without stopping a minute and saying, hey, wait, this probably isn't real. Maybe I should double check this first. How long until these sources completely disappear from the internet? Bad links, unarchived books, reposts without the sources, copyright claims, the list goes on of ways that the internet just loses information. Let's go ahead and also add chat GPT and other false information generators to the mix, and my ultimate question becomes this. How long until we're accepting these decidedly false statements as true with no way to verify them at all? Are we supposed to keep posting these trivia fun facts long after they've been proven wrong? Now think about how much of all the information on the internet goes through this same process. How many of you out there are guilty of regurgitating information you read based purely on headlines? How many pieces of info on the internet do you think are absolutely true, but don't have any proof of them whatsoever? How many of you overhear information from people you admire or discussions on social media and take it as your own opinion or fact? How many of you watch my videos and believe absolutely everything I say? 
which is a cage filled with starving refugees who lick the beans clean of any dirt and debris. Next stop is a micronizer, which heats the cocoa beans and spins them at a constant rotation, separating them from their families.